Thank you all for joining us today and welcome to Ecolab's webinar on best practices for optimizing cleaning operations to help offset labor challenges. Just a couple of quick housekeeping reminders before we get started. You may submit questions at any time during the presentation using the Q&A function. Also, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on ecolab.com and also will be sent out to participants later this week. Um, for those of you con pursuing continuing education credit, at the end of the presentation, there will also be a question with an option to request record of attendance, so feel free to um, fill that in if you need it. So again, welcome today and um, want to share with you who will be presenting today. We have Casey Struler, who is a Principal Technical Account Specialist. We also have Renee Muggenberg joining us, Senior Technical Account Specialist at Ecolab, and Tracy Juino, Lead Chemist here at Ecolab. So first off, let me just share the way that we approach these challenges here at Ecolab. We know that creating a cleaner, more inviting environment truly has never been more vital to the success of your business. And luckily, this is our wheelhouse. Ecolab has been in the business of cleaning for more than 98 years and is a trusted partner at nearly 3 million customer locations across the world. We're here to partner with you to power critical outcomes to your business, delighted guests, protected reputations, and optimized operations. We do this through efficiency, consistency, and sustainability to drive your financial performance. As you all are well aware on this call, cleaning is in the spotlight truly like never before. It's truly more critical than ever, and every operation has had to implement more frequent cleaning and disinfection, which ultimate, ultimately meant spending more time and really precious resources on sanitation. So while this expectation may stick around for the foreseeable future, we need to ask, how do we ensure we're optimizing the use of our labor force the most efficiently? So today we're gonna to focus specifically on ways to optimize your operations to really address those current labor challenges head on. We know this is a big challenge for everyone on the call. And so we wanna focus on it today and give you, we'll cover some surface hygiene and laundry operations practices in addition to food service operations and larger facility operations like schools, stadiums, office buildings, and more. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Casey Struler to talk to us a little bit about surface hygiene. Casey? Thanks, Jen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I know you all have so many things going on, so I hope you find this hour really valuable. Um, so as Jen mentioned, enhanced surface hygiene really is the expectation, no matter what type of operation that you're currently running. And honestly, it's, it's really non-negotiable. Um, so whether you're a hotel guest, a long-term care resident, a restaurant patron, a student or an employee, uh, having lived through a pandemic has changed every single one of us. Um, and enhanced hygiene expectations combined with this ongoing labor shortage means we really need to do more with less. So we know that the large cost to many operations, uh, including hotels, is labor, the single largest cost at that. Um, and undeniably, the demands on your staff have expanded since the onset of the pandemic. Over the past 18 months, they've taken on so much additional work. Um, and simultaneously, we saw this extreme dip in travel demand, which triggered a wave of furloughs and layoffs, a lot of people sitting at home wishing that they could be uh, seeing their smiling faces at hotels and restaurants. Um, but many of those that lost jobs during the pandemic may have permanently moved on from the hospitality industry as a whole. And so this really stretches your existing staff to cover a range of competing priorities that can have a very real impact on the quality of service that you're able to deliver. So ultimately, we need to face this labor shortage head on. We need to find ways to optimize our operations and eke out every last bit of uh, labor that we can to make sure we're utilizing it in the best, most impactful way. Um, by really increasing our productivity. Next slide, Renee. Um, so we know that one of the ways that hotels are approaching labor challenges today is they're really leaning into this concept of opt-in cleaning. Uh, this is sort of the model that they took, which was previously maybe positioned as, you know, one of the ways that they were helping with sustainability, and now this is one of the ways that they're really addressing this labor challenge head on. So 
while this might reduce the burden on your staff in the short term, there are some very real unintended consequences associated with this approach. Um, when we combine this with that really high touch guest profile that we're seeing today, those leisure travelers that are bringing their kids, their pets, they're eating on the bed, they're doing all the things in the room that maybe they used to do in other areas of the hotel or out and about in the world, um, this model really all but guarantees that you're gonna have increased time and effort required to clean the rooms. Um, they're gonna have more built up soils from days worth of activities in the room that maybe used to be taken care of uh, during a daily cleaning. And additionally, we're also seeing more prevalent and more persistent odors. Again, folks are bringing their pets, they're bringing their kids, they're spending more time in their room. Um, and so we see those odor problems uh, pop popping up. And then additionally, we see this occurrence and longevity of stain. So they're maybe removing makeup for the third day in, the ro in a row on the same towel. And so that really can cause a challenge later on down the line. So while this model might seem like the best way to manage your labor in the short term, recognize that you might sort of be kicking the can down the road, if you will. Uh, eventually these labor hours that are required to take care of some of these challenges, they may actually increase. They may present more of a challenge than they would if you took care of them uh, daily. So when we think about ways to optimize our labor in this really, really challenging environment, we have some of the best practices outlined here, specifically around selecting uh, a product such as a disinfectant, which we know is one of the main products you're using on premise. So a multi-purpose product like a one-step disinfectant, a product that cleans, and disinfects in one step would definitely be the type of product that you wanna select. So this product doesn't require any pre-cleaning. You're not having to touch the surface twice. Um, you can save on that valuable time and labor by just spraying the product, wiping it after the contact time and walking away. And when selecting a disinfectant, you wanna make sure you're selecting a product with a really broad claim set. So you can address all those pesky pathogens that might be lingering around in your operation, things like Noro or flu, uh, SARS-CoV-2, just to name a few. Um, you can find products with claims against all of these different pathogens in one product. Additionally, when you're evaluating a disinfectant, one of the most critical pieces of information is that contact time. I know there's been a lot of education around this in the past year. People are thinking about this a lot. How long do I have to leave that surface wet to actually get disinfectant, uh, disinfection, excuse me, and that is the contact time. So products that have a shorter contact time equate to more efficiency in your operation. It frees up some of those extra minutes to do other important tasks on site. When we think about surface hygiene, it's really one of those things that's inherently manual. It requires human power. So the goal of surface hygiene is to get the outcomes that you expect fast by boosting your labor efficiency and also reducing human error. Um, one of the ways that we address that here at Equilab is by really focusing on this simplified housekeeping program. Uh, we call it the two plus one program, a multi-purpose cleaner and disinfectant, a bathroom cleaner and disinfectant, and an odor control product. So having a simplified program like this really drives consistent and superior results across your operation. This really streamlines the number of products that might be on your cart or in your uh, cleaning closet, and it really helps ensure that the people that are using these products understand where you use a certain product, uh, it simplifies the training, et cetera. So reducing the number of products, as I mentioned, me could mean less trips back to a chemical closet. It could mean less trips back to a housekeeping cart. And again, save a couple precious minutes per room, which definitely adds up over time. So one of the most important parts to a simplified housekeeping program is this multi-purpose cleaner and disinfectant, something similar to our yellow peroxide product. Uh, this product in particular is a three-in-one product, so that really drives simplicity, like I said, in training, but also in use. It's meant to be the workhorse. You can use it across your operation on hard surfaces to disinfect and clean, and also on glass and mirrors for that streak-free finish. Uh, it does have one of the fastest contact times on the market, which we know drives efficiency. We just talked about that. But it also drives staff compliance. So when we're thinking about labor, we want to make sure that we make this really, really easy for our staff. So it's much more intuitive for them to do something like spray a table, for example, let the product sit for three minutes and then wipe the surface and move on uh, than it would be to spray the table and wait for 10 minutes for that surface to disinfect, wipe it, and then move on. So by deploying a multi-purpose product that's really versatile, it's compatible with a lot of surfaces in your operation, and it has that short contact time, you can achieve all of your intended outcomes in less time without compromising on the quality of service. 
Um, additionally, when we think about surface hygiene and operation, we probably think about what are some of the biggest, broadest surfaces that we have to consider, uh, where a lot of soils build up, where people go to maybe get rid of waste. And one place that I think of is the bathroom. So we all know cleaning is a really, really manual job, especially when you're cleaning something that might be tall, like a shower, or very broad, like a tub. Um, you're doing a lot of reaching, bending, scrubbing, all the things that, that can, you know, create some issues over time. So when, when we think about uh, this challenge, especially for those that are doing the cleaning, we try to think about ways that we can help optimize the amount of time they're spending, but also prevent maybe some of that reaching, bending, and scrubbing. So we've combined our scrub-free bathroom cleaner and disinfectant, the pink product, a lot of you know it as, uh, with this manual pump-up foamer. And what that does is it really offers kind of a one-two punch. So you can spray the product, you let it foam on the wall of the shower, on the tub, maybe on the toilet and the vanity. You walk away, you go make the bed, and you come back. And not only has it worked on that soap scum, the body soils, things like that that have built up in the tub, but it also helps work on those pathogens that may exist where human waste uh, once was. So the pump up foamer, when we've done testing uh, by a third party, we've been able to show total muscle effort reduced. You're allowing the, the actual foamer to do a lot of the work for you versus the person having to do a lot of the work. It reduces cardio workload, um, but it also optimizes time labor. So we've shown a two-minute savings per bathroom when you use this type of application versus a spray bottle, for example. So think about it this way. If your housekeeper has 15 rooms that they're supposed to clean during their shift, and they can save two minutes per room. That's 30 extra minutes that they have to maybe even get after that 16th room of the day. All right, and the third part of our two plus one program is uh, this odor control issue. And again, we've heard this a lot during the pandemic. Like I said, people are spending a lot more time in confined spaces. Uh, odors do become, to become a challenge. Um, and olfactory cues, funny enough, are one of the most important cues for people to sense that something is clean. So if you walk in somewhere that doesn't smell quite right, uh, that might indicate to you, hey, maybe this room isn't clean. It's really most closely linked to emotion and memory. You can probably close your eyes and think about a vacation you were on and smell that sunscreen or uh, the fresh breeze coming from the ocean. So it's a really, really important key when we think about clean. Um, so we have a plethora of products that are shown here. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on all of them, but I do want to hone in on, on a couple that are really the problem solvers. So Zeph Air is our product that's really focused on smoke odors and food odors, something, again, that we've heard uh, has become a challenge for a lot of our customers. We also have a product called Bioenzymatic, and this product is formulated, as the name sort of alludes to, um, specifically to address biological uh, odors, things that might come from a human, a pet, uh, mold, mildew, garbage, things like that. And both of these ensure that your staff can take care of the odor at the source without wasting any extra time. They can turn over that room on a Friday night. Maybe someone smoked in it a couple days before. Uh, they come in to clean it. Your full occupancy, you got to flip that room. You have 30 minutes. They can spray the, the Zephyr product through our handy-dandy Fogmaster Junior. Uh, Renee, if you would give us a click here. And treat all those soft surfaces and really make sure that you can have one uh, molecule of odor control product per one molecule of smoke. They can leave the room and turn it within just a couple minutes. So again, this really helps with that labor challenge. It really helps ensure that you can utilize all the parts of your operation uh, and not have to shut down things due to bad odor. So while we're on the topic of useful tools, I thought I'd mention our prof professional housekeeping tools. Um, this is a really integrated, flexible system. It improves the user experience for sure. We have housekeepers that rave about this, but it also really helps bolster their output. So we wanna make sure they can do their job as efficiently as possible. And these tools do a really good job of ensuring that. Um, they're lightweight, they're durable, they're ergonomic, and when we combine them with these interchangeable heads, again, we can prevent them from walking back and forth to the cart or walking back and forth to a closet to find a different tool that they need for another part of their job. Um, one additional best practice that we talk about a lot is uh, deploying a color-coded system. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people think of that bathroom product and they just say, oh, the pink product, um, and that's intentional. It's very, very intentional. So we have pink cloth to go with the pink product to clean the bathroom. And that not only simplifies training, but also it kind of is one of those things that worms its way into your brain and it's hard to forget. So when you're training these staff that have turned over, maybe they're brand new to the industry, they've never cleaned a bathroom before, uh, it really simplifies the training for them. Oh, I use my pink cloth with the pink product in the bathroom. 
uh, this one cloth, one task approach, as we call it, really discourages your staff from taking that cloth and maybe cleaning other areas. So they take the cloth, they just clean the toilet with, and then they might go try to clean the high touch doorknob, but they know, oh no, pink stays in the bathroom. Uh, so again, really driving home the simplicity of the program. And in just a bit, Tracy's going to touch on some additional tools that might help with any unique challenges that you have in your operations. So stay tuned for that. So without further ado, I think we'll uh, jump into our laundry topic for a second um, before we hand it over to Renee for food service. So we've covered surface hygiene. Uh, we're going to redirect our focus to la the laundry operation. Again, another place where there's a lot of human-powered activities going on. We know that being able to consistently deliver best-in-class results with every load is really, really challenging. Um, and so we want to make sure that even with limited or unexperienced staff, we can help you get there. So one of the ways we can do that is, you know, helping you select the right laundry program for the job. Uh, in this case, one of our uh, laundry programs that we talk a lot about is our low temp aquanomic program. And this program is really meant to optimize your total operations and help extend the shelf life of your linens. Um, but it also helps ensure that more linens come out clean on the very first pass, a great way to optimize that laundry operation. So we pair this program with out of product alarms Again, that's going to help minimize the number of times that you're running laundry without soap. Uh, the best way to get it clean is to make sure you have soap in there. And so that out of, product, out of product alarm is sort of that audible reminder, oh, hey, I might need to change out the product so that when I process this load of laundry, it comes out exactly as I expect. Um, we all know laundry can be a pretty unpleasant task. I don't know about you, but in my house, it's one of those tasks that we sort of uh, volley over to each other because neither of us particularly enjoys it. But when we're processing items with biological remnants, for example, maybe you're in a long-term care setting and you have something like urine rem uh, remnants from a resident, this can be pretty unpleasant for those that are processing those linens. And so one of the best benefits of this product is that finishing step, which really helps ensure that the laundry that comes out clean smells clean. Um, and this is not just a way to make the end users happy, the guests or the residents, but also to make sure that those that are processing linens and have that tough job are actually uh, you know, enjoying their job as well. So this helps you retain staff, the staff that you worked really hard to hire and to train and just makes their job that much more enjoyable. All right, so I kind of uh, mentioned this earlier and alluded to this, but doing less with more. This is uh, the theme, I think, of the last 18 months. We're all trying to get more done with less staff uh, and more demands on those staff. And this is really no different in, in the laundry operation. So as I mentioned, choosing products that are formulated to optimize your operation is, is uh, really important. And our aquanomic program is optimized for a low temp environment. So this can help you save on resources like water and energy, which provide better results uh, while providing better results in one pass. And as you can see in the visual here, Renee, if you'll give us a click, um, traditional laundry programs include many additional wash steps, which obviously increase both the water and energy that you're using. But if you optimize the use of these operational inputs, water and energy, uh, you can really help offset some of the additional costs that are associated with labor today. So hiring, training, and retooling staff. All right, and then just as on the labor, uh, sorry, on the surface hygiene side, got labor on the brain, um, you can source the best products on the market, but if you're not paying attention to proper procedures, this is something I talk about all day long uh, with folks, proper procedures, um, really the chemistry can't do its job. So we can really drive efficiency in the laundry room and reduce cost by ensuring that your staff knows how to load the washer and the dryer. So believe it or not, washer loading impacts all laundry costs. If your machine is underloaded, you're wasting not only chemistry, uh, pretty expensive stuff washing down the drain, but you're also wasting precious resources to humans that are putting those linens in the machines and folding them and drying them. Um, you're not able to process as many linens in uh, less amount of loads. If you're overloading your machines, you're definitely not going to get the results that you're looking for. You're going to get poor soil removal, maybe, and you might lead to this might lead to increased reclaim, which we know equals more labor in the long run. So all of the costs, the labor, the water, the energy uh, in your operation do go up when you have poor results and, and poor procedures. This is really why we want to focus on a quick hit like this. If you walk in the laundry room and you're looking at the, the linen washing around in that washing machine, if they're hitting that 10 and 2 mark on the washing machine, that's a great way to ensure that your staff is loading the washing machine properly. 
and it's really similar with the with the dryers. You fill them a third full with with wet linens. They should fluff up to about a half full when they're dry. Um, and so, as long as you're properly loading both the washer and the dryer, you can really save on all of the other inputs in your laundry room. And last but not least, we're going to talk a little bit about reclaim. Uh, everyone's favorite topic. No, reclaim is one of those things that every single operation that does on-premise laundry can back. Um, it's really one of those challenges that, uh, you know, we just have to deal with and we, we have to figure out a way to overcome. So 86% of linens are discarded due to stains. We've heard this is a challenge that's bubbled up. People are eating on beds. Like I said, they're, they're leaving behind um, extra stains on their towels. And so this is one of the main reasons that linens are being discarded. So on average, only 5% of linens are discarded due to wear and tear. So when we deploy a, a laundry program, we really want to have an end-to-end -end laundry program that includes stain management, having pre-spotters on hand to spot any um, makeup stains or stains from people's shoes, things that they're doing in the room is a really great, great best practice. And additionally, having a reclaimed product that you can toss in the, in the washing machine with all the linens that you're reclaiming uh, can ensure that you get anywhere from 70 to 80 percent of those linens back to put them into circulation. Um, so this is really important when we think about particularly the year we're in. I don't know about all of you, but um, I've heard over and over and over again that we're all plagued by linen shortages. It's really hard to get new linens. And so being able to reclaim even a portion of those that might be stained and put them back in circulation can save us all. Um, so the expectation is really that you get 95% 90, of those linens clean on the first pass. That one pass wash, get 95% of those uh, clean and ready to put back in circulation. Uh, having about 5% reclaim is totally normal, but if your reclaim gets higher than about 5%, we need to look at your products, your procedures, maybe even your water quality to understand why, uh, what's the root cause of this issue. So the message is really just don't waste labor unnecessarily processing piles and piles of reclaim. Aim for that one pass wash. And if you do have reclaim that needs to be processed, make sure you're utilizing some sort of stain management program. So I'll pass it over to Renee to talk a little bit about food service optimization. All right, thanks Casey. I'm excited to be here to talk about food service. And I know there's a lot of people on the line today for this specifically, so excited to have you all. Um, so I'm gonna dive right in. Um, obviously we know that uh, labor is a concern all across uh, all markets right now. And food service is not an exception here. Um, in June and July of this year, we know that 75% of operators are, have been saying that recruiting and retaining employees is one of the top challenges that they are facing currently. Um, that is also with 71% of restaurants um, saying that they are currently understaffed. Um, and this is something that we don't see going away anytime soon. Um, so we do foresee this going on into 2022 as well. Um, so one thing that we think of in terms of not just recruiting, but also how we retain, is sort of getting after what are the challenges that your current employees are sort of facing. And what we've heard is that roughly a third of these food service employees have said that lack of training is one of the top challenges that they face. Um, so today I don't just want to talk about how we can sort of help ensure that we're making your operation as efficient as possible and reducing that labor for your employees, but also where we can reduce complexity um, to sort of tackle that sort of training issue that we're seeing. So if we reduce complexity, you're making training not easy, only easier for you, uh, but easier for your employees to learn as well. Um, so when we talk food service, it's a very broad segment. There's a lot of stuff that we do here. Um, so where do we see the vast majority of this labor being spent? And I'm sure some of you guys were thinking this, maybe some of you guys said it out loud. Um, dish washing is definitely one of those that um, immediately jumps to, to the mind, um, whether that's wear washing specifically, uh, manual, uh, pot and pan, or if that's rewash and uh, hand polishing as well, that's a very big one for our food service uh, employees. Um, the other one, especially in the last year, I think this might be a, one that maybe a couple of you guys thought of as well, but um, surface and table clearing, cleaning, and sanitizing, especially with the heightened awareness around that uh, this last year, has is, is incredibly labor intensive for our employees. Um, and then last but not least, if any of you guys have ever had to clean greasy soils, um, flat top grills, fryers, uh, the like, uh, those are also incredibly labor intensive. I just really want to highlight these three just so you get an idea of what we're going to cover today since these are where we see, this, these are the areas that we see our staff having the most of their time being spent. I really want to focus on what we can do to help them here specifically. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to jump into wear washing uh, because this is a great segue from uh, what Casey was sort of talking earlier because one of the best ways to drive efficiency in your wear wash operation is to ensure that you're reducing rewash. 
Um, so getting that one pass washing uh, that Casey was talking about. Um, so first I'm gonna talk about proper procedures and this is generally just take a look at your operations. Um, these are some quick hits that you can do, some really easy things that you can train your staff on um, that have a really big impact in terms of reducing rewash. Um, so first up, ensuring that they're pre-scrapping and uh, racking things properly. Um, it sounds super simple, but I'm sure if anyone has a, a dishwasher in, a, in their home, um, you see it happen all the time. Um, so if you're pre-scrapping, not only are you removing soils from those wares, uh, so it's more likely to get clean the first time through, but on top of that, you're not getting soil into your sump, which means cleaner water in general, um, but on top of that, you're not having to dump and fill your machine as frequently. Uh, proper racking, I think that's a pretty obvious one. Um, at home, I can always tell when my husband doesn't do proper racking. Not only can I see it, but um, you pull wares out that still have chunks of food on it um, and the like. And basically, it just means that you're stacking in a way where uh, you have wares that aren't getting hit with chemistry and water, which obviously we want to happen for that one pass wash. Um, another one that I think it's uh, kind of looked over quite a bit is make sure that you're utilizing a free soak. Have your chemistry work for you. Um, this is time directly back into your employee's day uh, that they can spend on anything else. Um, so there's a couple great options that we have. I know we've got a smart power pre-soak that's a dual enzymatic that can really go after any of those really tough soils. But honestly, any pre-soak that you use can really help ensure that you're breaking down those toughest soils before they even reach uh, the wear wash machine, which is really big. Um, last but not least, if at all possible, uh, see if you can't dump and fill your dish machine Trying to running, prior to running your glassware. Um, so that's really key, just because glassware in general really can show a lot of that soil on them. Um, and again, we really wanna aim for that one pass wash. Um, so this is uh, basically the, just the procedures that you can use to ensure that you're getting that one pass wash. The secondary aspect of this, and I know Casey talked about this for laundry as well, is ensure that you're using the correct chemistry uh, for the conditions that you have. And why is this important? And a lot of this has to do with the fact that wear washing conditions have changed quite drastically over the years. Um, so not only are we seeing that we're using less water per rack, but on top of the type of soil that we're finding in our sumps are much higher in protein. Um, so what does that mean for you is that the food soil concentration in your tank is increasing and a lot of that food soil concentration is protein based. Um, so when you take a look at the types of chemistry that you're using, make sure that you're picking one that is specifically formulated to tackle not only that higher amount of soil in your sump, um, but that it's specifically formulated uh, for protein. Um, Smart Power is a great option. Um, we've got some great statistics on this one as well, but one of the things that I really like about this one is as soon as our customers start using it, I immediately hear them come back and say, you know what, I can even see that it's working because my dish machine on the inside is even cleaner. Um, cleaner dish machine, cleaner wares, um, you get your one pass wash, and again, that sort of really goes to drive efficiency uh, for those wear washing conditions. All right, so next one is uh, surface cleaning and sanitizing. Again, as I mentioned before, um, this has been really, really uh, important in the last year. And unfortunately, this is one that just takes a lot of labor and a lot of effort for our employees. Um, so what I really wanna highlight here is sort of that training aspect. And specifically, how do we help reduce complexity here? And I think, especially in the last couple of years, we see a lot of different products being used in this space. Um, so just make sure that you're selecting the right product for the job. And specifically, I wanna focus on food can affect sanitizers versus hard surface disinfectants. And I know Casey had covered a little bit about proxenomicity earlier, but I really wanna focus on that food contact sanitizer. And I really wanna see people really stress that we want to use food contact sanitizers on those food contact services. So ensure that any place that people are eating food or prepping food, um, even your third compartment sinks, that that is where you're using a food contact sanitizer. Um, and the main reason is because this, a food contact sanitizer is specifically formulated for use on food contact surfaces. Um, not only that, but it's specifically formulated to target pathogens that are related to, to foodborne illnesses. And this is a in slight difference to disinfectants. Uh, for one, they're not specifically formulated for those food contact surfaces, uh, which means that it's not food contact safe. So if you are using it on a food contact surface, you would have to use a potable water rinse. So again, in terms of complexity and reducing steps, that's something that we want to avoid. Um, so really just ingrain it in your staff and really train them that um, you want to use a food contact sanitizer on those food contact surfaces and really make it part of your food safety culture. You can go even a little bit further and reduce labor even more with this if you ensure that you're choosing a multi-purpose um, food contact sanitizer um, to just even further reduce uh, steps and reduce the complexity that we do see in this area. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of the three-step process we typically see on this space. 
Um, we typically see that clean with a, a detergent, cleaner, disinfector, something, uh, a rinse step, and then a sanitizer. Uh, three steps, two products is pretty normal. Um, but if you are able to pick a multi-purpose product to eliminate that extra step and reduce it down to just one product, think of that from a complexity standpoint and a training standpoint for your employees. Um, on top of that, too, that's a huge time saving. You're cutting out an entire step uh, for them. Um, so I just really want to bring this home and sort of show like what we currently see in the space is that we have a lot of different, being, different products being used in a lot of different spaces. Um, a lot of very cleaning and sanitizing procedures and compliance is incredibly difficult. Um, so what we can do is if you even just ensure that you're bringing that sort of food safety culture of we are going to use a food contact sanitizer on those food contact surfaces and a disinfectant in the appropriate places for a disinfectant, it goes a long way in terms of simplifying that training. But if you're also able to get that multi-purpose product, you're reducing the steps, you're reducing the products, it really makes it so much easier for your employees. All right, so the last topic for me is uh, degreasing. It's actually one of my favorite ones, um, and I'm sure if anyone's ever worked in the back of the house, you know how difficult degreasing can really be. Um, so one of the key things you can do as you look at your operations um, is just ensuring that you're choosing products and tools that really help reduce the steps and complexity involved. Um, on top of that, with degreasing, anytime you can reduce dependency on reaching certain temperatures, whether that's before or for your actual cleaning, is really key. And this just sort of ties into that kind of downtime that we see um, that's kind of wasted labor as you have employees that are sitting there waiting for temperatures to get reached. Um, and then last but not least, choosing products that can be used in multiple locations. Um, so again, just taking a step back and seeing if you can find products or processes that can do this is really key for you and your employees. Um, I, I've got a couple of uh, examples here that we're going to dive into, but again, it's just something to keep in mind as you look at this. Um, so who here has ever used uh, or cleaned a fryer, fryer um, with a normal standard boil-out process? Um, because I have done it, and it is not an easy process. Um, you can see on the screen the typical boil-out process is actually quite complex. There's a lot of steps involved, and as the name suggests, you are literally boiling water with chemistry in it um, to get this clean. Um, so if you just take a look and see if you can't find a, a specific product that can sort of help reduce the number of steps but also remove um, that boiling step, uh, such as our no-boil fryer cleaner, it goes a long way in terms of reducing the complexity for your employees in making training easier, but then also just making it uh, much safer um, with a lot less downtime time process for you and your employees. Another one that I think a lot of people think of when they think of degreasing, and I think a lot of people are aware that this is a really difficult one to clean, but grills specifically with degreasing, it's incredibly time intensive. Um, I know sometimes it can take upwards an hour or longer um, if you've got certain products. Um, on top of that, depending on the type of product that you use, some are very temperature dependent where you need to reduce the temperature before you clean. So take a look at that product and see if you can't swap it out for one that you can, you can actually use at a high, higher temperature. Um, so for example, we've got the high temp grill cleaner um, that you can use at a hot temperature. Um, but on top of that, I'm sure a lot of people are aware these types of um, like grill cleaning is typically uses a lot of elbow grease. Um, so if you can find a product that helps reduce the amount of time for your employees, that's, that's a huge win for your employees. Um, on top of that, this specific product does not require a rinse. So in terms of reducing steps, um, it's another big win. All right. So anytime we talk to de degreasing, this does extend to your kitchen floors as well. Um, as I mentioned before, any time that you can use a multi-purpose product is really key. Um, so as I'm sure the vast majority of you are aware, alkaline floor cleaners are pretty uh, common or typical in the back house for that really premium performance against those oils and uh, greasy soils that we find on the floors. Um, and what that typically means is when we got the premium performance in that back of house, that instead of using that in the front of house, we're using neutral floor cleaners just because it is much more compatible. Um, so if you are able to find a product that can be used in all the locations, again, as Casey had mentioned before, anytime you can reduce the number of SKUs, anytime you can simplify any sort of complexity, um, no rinse off and floor cleaner is a great example just because it does have that premium performance, but on top of it, it is gentle enough to use on those front of house floors as well. All right, I've got one bonus slide here that doesn't quite fit in with the three categories that I identi identified. Um, but I think it's a really big win because, again, as we talk about food service, it covers quite a vast majority of different areas. Um, so this is our prep and print uh, digital labeling system. And using this one can lead up to at least roughly 60% of labor savings when compared to handwriting labels. 
And the reason I really want to bring this is not only because we've seen a huge increase in the amount of to-go items and things that are just, you know, packaged um, that require labels, but you can also use, use this for other things than just food. Um, so I know that we've seen this being used um, to create labels for make your own wipes as well. But again, it's a very easy way to, to print things accurately and legible very quickly. Um, they're extremely customizable, which is a really big win. Um, so that's what I have for you from a food service perspective. Uh, again, any questions you have, you can pop them in the Q&A. We'll be covering them later. Um, but for now, I'm going to pass it off to Tracy for facilities. Right to the next slide. So historically, the issues with labor in the Jan Sand market have been employee retention. High turnover meant high meant training and retraining for the same position multiple times a year. It costs approximately $1,000 to recruit and onboard a new employee with reduced productivity while training. Repeating that cycle frequently is a drain on all employees. During the beginning of the pandemic, buildings had restricted access, lower foot traffic, or were shuttered altogether. Employees were forced to find alternative employment options if they were able. As schools, government, office, and retail locations started to reopen, external factors related to COVID are still having an impact on if and when people are looking to rejoin the job market. The future will be different. Many veteran employees use the shutdown to escalate their retirement, taking years of experience with them. Cleaning in and of itself is different. A heightened lens to cleaning for health instead of cleaning for appearance requires a higher level of training, and it is most likely here to stay. One cleaning company in Michigan has a story that is playing out across the country, extreme labor shortages like they've never experienced. 10 weeks after winning a school district bid, staff level was at 49 of an expected 104. The struggle is multifaceted. Pay, job appeal, and recruiting all played a part. Increasing recruiting and raising wages moved the lever only slightly. Some outside the box, think outside the box thinking was required. The demographics of their employees base included family members who commute together. If one leaves the company, they all leave. So transportation became a challenge, and they looked to rideshare programs to help address this. There are also challenges outside of the company's direct control at a site level. As a company with a multi-state reach, the change in Michigan state marijuana legalization conflicts with the company mandates, and some potential employees were not passing drug screens. Additional tasks like teacher or staff requests for immediate cleaning when meetings or classrooms turn over further tax the already shorthanded crew. At the start of the pandemic, the group of people who kept offices clean, safe, and in good shape were sometimes forgotten until there was an immediate issue that needed attention. Oftentimes they are contractors paid by outside third parties. About 24% of facility managers outsource cleaning and maintenance. Many of these folks lost their jobs or had their hours severely cut to nearly nothing. Now the tide has turned. The people who make offices buildings, office buildings run are in high demand as businesses and companies set forth their return to work plans. Job recruiting sites have thousands of listings for cleaners, custodial workers, janitors, and housekeeping services. This increase in need is driving up the salary base in a previous lower wage environment. The commercial cleaning services industry was growing at a respectable pace even before the spread of coronavirus. With the emergence of variants throughout the country, cleaning companies can expect business to grow and remain critical for years as the lens on cleaning and disinfection has been amplified. Professional tools like those shown here can help improve not only worker experience, but also productivity. Tools that are lightweight, durable, and ergonomic avoid unnecessary exertion and alleviate fatigue. Complete cleaning systems and wearable products, wearable product options are easier to use and avoid multiple trips back to the custodial closet. Systems that spray faster or cover more area reduce time spent on each task. The tools you use to apply your cleaning chemistry can improve efficiency and user safety while ensuring positive results. 
In the service hygiene section of this presentation, we discuss what product to select to complete a job most efficiently with the optimal results the first time. Now let's take a bit, let's talk a bit about how to apply those products. The first thing to consider when selecting the surface application method is the direction for use on the product label. Use this as your guide. On the screen here, you'll see some of the most common application me methods on a continuum from those that are optimized for local application to more large-scale generalized application. First up is the disposable wipe, which is either a dry roll doused with chemistry or pre-saturated. This method allows for flexibility and convenience, perfect for those in between cleanings where care is needed, like touch screens or electronics. Trigger sprayers are the most traditional method of product application and work well to direct product to a surface. This type of application is best suited for small to mid-size areas or places where you need a more precise spray. Trigger sprayers are often very cost effective with low initial investment, but tend to require the most labor due to the required manual pull of the trigger and spreading the product with a cloth to ensure even coverage. Pressurized sprayers are better suited for larger areas and provide more continuous style of spray. They typically require manual effort to pressurize the tank and would be best suited for large non-food contact areas and floor applications. Finally, one application method that grew quickly in popularity over the course of the pandemic is the electrostatic sprayer. It is unique in that it requires much less, less manual effort and can, can deliver product to a large area in a relatively short period of time, making it very labor efficient method of cleaning. The electrostatic sprayers are powered units, often battery powered, that apply a slight charge to the droplets as they leave the unit. This charge causes the droplets to behave like tiny magnets and ensure droplets are more readily attracted to the surrounding environmental surfaces. Because the droplets are given the same charge, they repel each other and spread out evenly across the surface, providing more uniform and comprehensive coverage. This increases efficiency of application and allows for faster coverage of large areas like event or meeting spaces in classrooms. Electrostatic sprayers are 70% faster and require 65% product over standard trigger application. This method requires additional PPE and modified procedures for safe use, especially in any area that might house food or food contact surfaces. It is important to note that applying sanitizers or disinfectants through an electrostatic sprayer does not replace the need for manual cleaning. These devices do not remove soil, debris, or blood and body fluids. They only help apply the products more evenly across the surface and in difficult to reach areas. Use of an electrostatic sprayer should be in addition to, and not in place of, manual cleaning and disinfection. When evaluating new technologies, particularly related to product application, it is important to partner with your chemical supplier to understand any benefits such as operational efficiencies and considerations, including is it appropriate for use when guests are present or what PPE and training might be required to operate the new technology. All products used through an electrostatic sprayer need to be approved by the EPA for use in these devices. Areas like restrooms, shower stalls, truck stops, or fitness centers have different soil loads and disinfection needs than offices or classrooms. Clean and odor-free restrooms create a great first impression. Effective disinfectant solutions help prevent the spread of germs. Closed systems like the cleaning caddy simplify the cleaning process with a touch-free system that allows for deep cleaning and disinfection every day of the week. Closed loop onboard chemistry with a battery charged spray wand allows for faster application of product and coverage of all cleaning surfaces, which increases employee productivity, productivity in half the time. The onboard tools include a wet vac, remove dirty solution for a complete clean. The whole system is compact and easy to maneuver with a footprint similar to a mop and bucket.
Coated floors take a lot of work. Traditional string mop application is time consuming and takes a skilled hand for proper application. The patented ergonomic phaser floor finish application system improves productivity and safety, delivers ultimate worker comfort, and pro reduces product and packaging waste. The ergonomically designed backpack fits comfortably on the operator and eliminates bending, reaching, and wringing of string mops. Fluid, un in fluid uninterrupted motion eliminates the disruption of rewetting the string mop, enabling workers to increase productivity up to 73% over a mop and bucket system. The splash-free splash microfiber head allows for precise application of finish from wall to wall. Quick and easy setup and cleanup provide flexibility to do any space with minimal interruption. As labor continues to be in short supply, a different approach to the process of cleaning may work for your facility. First, evaluate the building. It may take time, but a thorough evaluation of the building can make the cleaning more efficient for your staff. Even small janitorial companies can benefit from implementing a team cleaning approach instead of zone cleaning to save labor and money and therefore add to profit. Zone cleaning means one employee performs all tasks for a specific floor or section of the building. Because each cleaner has multiple responsibilities, it is easier to miss tasks leading to a less than optimal clean. Zone cleaning takes longer because cleaners are switching between tasks often even multitasking, which is slower and takes more time. Training takes a considerable amount of time as each task must be learned and mastered. Lastly, because each zone cleaner must vacuum, dust, clean restrooms, and more, they each need their own set of tools, equipment, and supplies. That means a lot of costly equipment. From an effectiveness, efficiency, and economical perspective, Zone cleaning simply isn't the best way to clean a large building. Team cleaning groups tasks together. A team of specialists go through the area systematically. Each team member is responsible for a specific task throughout the building. With team cleaning, fewer employees working as one unit can clean the same amount of space. Teams are generally broken down into four sections, light duty work like dusting and trash removal, vacuuming, restroom cleaning, and utility work, like glass cleaning or mopping. Since janitors are concentrating on specific tasks, they can clean faster. Supervision is easier because all work is being done to the same standard. Mopping on floor one is done the same on floor 10. Training is also more precise, so team members become more skilled and efficient in their roles. Lastly, team cleaning means you only need one full set of equipment for the building. This allows for purchase of better or more efficient tools. Team cleaning creates job mastery and a clear understanding of the work and a heightened level of accountability. Without a proper matting system, your staff will end up spending more time and money on soil removal procedures like vacuuming or removing scratches from your floor finish. It costs $600 to remove a pound of dirt inside a facility, but only $20 if the soil is caught at the door in the matting. The ideal entrance matting system needs to be a minimum of 18 feet of matting from start to finish, which is only six steps of a normal walking stride. The outside scraper mat, Hoyer combination matting, and indoor wiper matting all work together to prevent grit from impacting your floors. A proper matting system will keep your floors cleaner and safer and reduce the labor spent on floor care dramatically. Understanding the maintenance cycles for floors and how it impacts your labor can help focus cleaning efforts to the best possible outcome. Sand and grit are the major causes of floor wear, whether it is hard surface or carpet. 1,000 people will track in 1.2 pounds of dirt into a facility each day. That increases to 3.6 pounds on wet days. The better your crew handles daily tasks, the longer you prevent moving into the more labor-intensive steps. Sweeping and vacuuming can prevent 
that dry soil from acting like sandpaper on the shoes of your patrons, scratching the floor finish or abrading the carpet fibers. Always remember to sweep or vacuum prior to any wet cleaning. Just like at the beach, it's easier to remove dry sand from your beach towel than wet sand. Restorative tasks can take up to 15 times as long to complete as daily tasks. Those are additional hours and dollars to your labor spent. One of the most labor intensive tasks is refinishing floors. With increased use of disinfectants and hand sanitizers throughout the pandemic, the appearance of coated floors has been greatly impacted. Stickiness from repeated, repeated quat disinfection or dulling of and spotting from hand sanitizer drips drives floor maintenance from the daily category to interim or even restorative more rapidly. Max Durable is an innovative two-part urethane hybrid floor finish with alcohol and quaternary resistance that is three to four times more durable as conventional acrylic floor finish, allowing you to postpone additional labor steps like burnishing or scrub and recoats until much later than a normal maintenance cycle. Max Durable is applied like a traditional floor finish, so no additional training is required. With faster dry times than a conventional finish, you can complete a hallway or room in half the time. The low odor profile allows maintenance to take place in facilities that don't shut down or where odors cause disruptions like hospitals and care centers. In some locations, a change has been made to a type of flooring that does not require a coating. This no or low maintenance flooring includes luxury vinyl tile, laminates, rubber, linoleum, and sheet goods. These floors have a hard, durable top coat installed by the manufacturer that provides protection, but that protection is not infallible. Scratches to the top coat can leave the floor looking worn or dirty, leading to additional labor steps to repair. Multi-purpose products like no low maintenance flooring cleaner and protector improve the look of this type of flooring with nothing more than daily cleaning, meaning no additional training or maintenance steps are required. This cleaner fluff product delivers a simplified daily solution to clean and protect your floors without any, adding any additional gloss, which can make floors look plastic in appearance. No low maintenance flooring cleaner and protector repairs minor scratches without applying traditional floor finish or requiring additional maintenance steps like burnishing. For heavily worn floors, just increase the product dilution to the rejuvenate level until an even appearance is achieved. No low maintenance flooring cleaner and protector is convenient, safe, and flexible to use with mop and bucket, auto scrubber, or spray, app spray applications so it integrates seamlessly into your current daily cleaning regime. Carpet exists in nearly every building, from hallways to offices to resident areas. They are great sound absorbers, but also dirt retainers. If you wait until your carpets look dirty before doing a deeper clean, you have waited too long. Using a planned maintenance program before cleaning will help your car carpets look better over time and lengthen the life of the textile. A proactive schedule of interim maintenance is less labor intensive and easier to train. Three-in-one carpet cleaner and spot remover can be used as an extraction cleaner, pre-spray cleaner, and a carpet spotter, making only one product needed for all your carpet needs. The peroxide-based chemistry helps remove stains during the pre-spray step to reduce the need for pre-spotting. It is Carpet and Rug Institute and Wolf Safe certified for confidence in use when you are unsure of the carpet type. And lastly, in the facility care industry, your goal is to keep your buildings clean and safe for all who use it. Establishing a comprehensive hand care program throughout your facility can prevent the spread of illness among occupants as well as guests. Hand soap sanitizer stations and facilities have increased by three to four X since the start of the pandemic, increasing the number of dispensers that your staff must monitor on a daily basis. The next to the concentrate system allows you to save time by refilling dispensers before they run out, reducing refill time and maintenance effort while saving partially filled bottles from being thrown away. A single push button activation rapidly dilutes the concentrate into closed loop refillable bottles. The bottles can be placed in manual or touch-free dispensers with ease. The clear side window 
provides easy usage monitoring and visible expiration dates for faster change out. A full suite of concentrated hand hygiene products are available. And now I will hand it back over to Jen for our closeout. Great, well, thank you so much, Tracy. You've been hearing a lot about the best ways to maximize the impact of your labor investment today. And it's also really important to make sure that you provide adequate training to con and consider deploying a verification system as part of that effort. So I wanna tell you a little bit about um, some of the things we wanna share with you today about training. So investing in, your, in training your staff properly, whether they're onboarding or retooling is sure to pay dividends. In order to really maximize that impact and improve retention and truly support that overall operational efficiency, it's important to continue to cross-train those employees. You know, we already mentioned that you can realize significant change cost savings by minimizing turnover, as training can cost upwards of $1,000 for a new employee. So when it comes to adult learning, um, understanding that one style does not fit all and there is no such thing as a one and done um, way to do things. There's just some ways that we know that you can maximize your training that we'd love to share here. So one, make sure to give some context to the training and include hands-on components. Additionally, utilize real-time feedback, periodic reevaluation, and even verification programs to maintain that performance and ensure that the most efficient cleaning methods are continuously being deployed. There's also a lot, a suite of tools we'd love to share with you. As we've alluded to, one key to optimizing staff efficiency is proper training. Eagle Lab offers training in many capacities, online, on-site, and on task. This approach to training is really meant to be comprehensive and flexible. So the idea here is to meet the learner where they are. We also have a training lab platform, Lobster Inc., which gamifies and tracks training and also provides printed job aids, aids and live webinars. Eagle Lab also offers cleaning verification programs, which include Eagle Lab Science Certified. The Eagle Lab, Eagle Lab Science Certified program takes a comprehensive, strategic, and programmatic approach to helping to optimize your operations while also building patron assistance and assurance and confidence. So this program brings together the right products, programs, and procedures, along with patron-facing marketing, and it helps you ensure efficient use of that labor force. So for some final takeaways today, we want to just reinforce that we understand the immense pressure that you're under to deliver the best possible guest, patron, student, or resident experience with that limited staff in this very uncertain time. You need to remain focused on managing the still really relevant public health risks and the perception of clean as your staff returns. By optimizing your operations, you can improve productivity and increase operational savings while retaining that hard-earned labor force. Thank you so much for your time today. And we have just a couple of minutes of remaining time and we'll answer a couple of questions that have come through the chat. Um, so first question uh, that came through the chat for the team here is, can the handheld pump up foamer be used with any other cleaning products, for example, grease lift or any of the other food service products? Renee, you want to take that one? Yeah, just quickly on unmuting, unmuting myself. <laughs> um, no, I'm not aware. I don't think we can use uh, any other products with the pump of foamer. That is a, a, um, that is a piece of equipment that is only supposed to be used uh, with um, a scrub-free bathroom cleaner. Um, it's a great question, but unfortunately, no. That's the only product it's supposed to be used with. I think we have time for one more. And then any other questions that came in, we will um, follow up with and we can answer with you after the webinar. Um, one other quick question though, can I replace my current disinfectant with a residual chemistry as a labor saving measure? Double muted here. Um, you know, one of the call outs here is that we've heard residual chemistries uh, really did have a moment. People are wanting to put these 
on places that are high touch surfaces. And so I would just ensure that you know whether it's actually a, a real-time disinfectant that's uh, on EPA's list N with, with, that meets the criteria for a, a hospital disinfectant uh, with SARS-CoV-2 claims, or if it's a product that's meant to be supplemental to your standard cleaning and disinfection program. So there are two different categories of residual products, and I would make sure you work with your chemical partner to ensure that you're using it in the right way. Great. Well, thank you. We do have a few other questions that have come in, but we will um, follow up with you since we are running short on time today. A lot of content to cover in this short hour. But thank you all for joining us today. Really appreciate your time um, and uh, look forward to helping you with your needs in the future as well. Thank you.